Round 12, guys. Here we are. We're absolutely smashing through these rounds. Let's go through the team list for this week. All the important ins and outs. Some of the... A little bit around the buy, hold, sell. Uh, a little bit of the story around each uh, certain player there. And we go to the Broncos and the Storm game to start. And the question is, how bad is this going to be? Or are Broncos going to put up a fight like they did last week and actually get a win? So... I doubt them, uh, doubt them beating the Storm with a few of their players back, but we'll, we'll go through the squad. And, and you know, Sarko's sitting there, and he's someone I think you can just hold into round 13 and probably move on after that as he's not a keeper. Herbie Farnworth comes back, and the question's going to be, is this the week to, to pick him up, or do you wait one more and, and get him in 13? Because I know a lot of you are interested in, you know, getting him as a centre for, for your squads and looking for him to be somewhat of a keeper. So... He's someone to, to think about over the next couple of weeks. We have Milford coming back for Tyson Gamble. My thoughts around Gamble is that you got to hold him this week. It's only a one-week suspension, and there's a decent chance that he comes back into the team next week. Obviously, they won with him in the squad. Milford's been dropped a, mul a multitude of times now, and there's a good chance they get beat pretty comfortably by the Storm, and I imagine they just revert back. I don't think this, this is going to be great for uh, Milford's mental health, being in and out of the squad like this, but... It's what it is, unfortunately. Albert Kelly, people are, are, you know, are obviously going to be talking about, and will he be good enough to continue scoring or you know, be a starter in your squad? And I know my thoughts around it is that I, I probably wouldn't want to be targeting someone that that can come in and, and you know, score really well one week in his first one, and then and then have a really low score like Gamble did, for example. If they get smashed, obviously, you know, first game back they've actually won which means his scoring is going to be a lot better. So think about that, and, and do you want to be making those trades and changes very uh, very quickly when we're running out of you know, running out of an adequate amount of trades very, very easily ourselves? So that's the question there. You've got, um, you got Turpin still there playing some big minutes. Palaszczuk is a lot, one a lot of people are talking about. And with him, he's only going to have the spot, well, he should only have the spot for a bunch of weeks. So after this week, Ricky's going to be back in the following we also have Glenn coming back fairly soon as well. So that spot will be taken by one of those guys. Uh, Matt Lodge is out this week, so Reese Kennedy starts, but I wouldn't be looking at him as an option. Payne Haas is uh, going to drop a little bit of cash over the next few weeks, which is good. I think he's a really, really cool option in round 14 for overall. Head-to-head, -head, you could probably, probably wait until then as well, as I don't play next week. Uh, but he's probably got a little bit of cash to lose this week. If you need him for... You know, a, a decent, you've got a decent uh, opponent this week and you need someone, you want to upgrade someone to him, then I think he's probably solid this week. Flegler's too late to buy now, but he's scoring okay. TPJ, I think is still a, a really solid option. My question right now is, is there a chance that he plays Origin? There might be. So, you know, coming off the bench with all the you know, suspensions, if Crichton goes, you know, goes down with suspension, then he might be an option there. So, yeah, lots to talk about in that Broncos side. Moving on to the Storm side of things, and, and Nico Hines is in there. And the question now, with him being 110k more expensive, is is he going to be worth bringing into your squad at like that 570k or whatever he is to you know play over the next few weeks? Obviously, Munster's still out. Is he going to play Origin? All these questions, right? So at least got the next two weeks, then you should expect him to play 14 as well. But then from 15 and 16, will he be playing or will he be off the bench? That's something you got to think about there. Obviously, 17, they have a buy as well. So that could be three weeks in a row without him when you've already lost 100, you know, missed out on 110K and a really big score last week. Is it worth him bringing him in this week? I'm not exactly sure. Might be, just. You're still going to have a bit of a cash grab. You'll probably end up around the 700K mark. But if you're running out of trades, I don't know if it's worth it because he's, he's, you're probably going to have to trade him out at some point. So keep that in mind. Remus Smith's still doing well. So keep, your, keep, keep hold of him. If you brought in Olam last week, he will score better. It will, he will come back to normal. Yeah, everyone can have one one bad game. Uh, that's for sure. Chris Lewis scored right in the sixth jersey. Jerome Hughes comes back, which is really good for anyone who picked him up last week or anyone who's been holding him and doing really well with him. Good stuff. Brandon Smith, do, we, do, you, do you pick him up as an option? And personally, I don't think he's going to score well enough long term for him to be a really good option. But I think over the next few weeks, he should score pretty well. Obviously, got a three tries this last week and way over 100 meters. So he's someone that... Uh, that will do well in this short little period, but I don't think he's a keeper long term and probably not worth it. Christian Welch, you could trade over the next few weeks. You know, with all the issues at the moment, maybe it's worth holding until next week. He's going to play Origin too, miss 13 and 17, and and maybe some limited minutes in in 14 and 18, something like that. But uh, just keep that in mind with him, and if you're ready to upgrade him, he's at a decent price, what 580 or something like that. So he could be a really good uh, upgrade target. We'll move along to the next game and. 
And with our Cowboys, there's not too much to talk about. Obviously, Tamalolo is out suspended after his sin bin. We have uh, you know, Kyle Feld and, and Talangi doing pretty well. They lose Lemu Lemu, and Hamiso comes back. So not someone you want to think about at this stage. Cohen Hess moves to 13. Tom Gilbert's still in the 8 jersey. I wouldn't be looking at any of those guys at this stage, but something to think about going forward. On the uh, on the uh, Warriors side, you've got Reese Walsh there. And the question for him is going to be, is he going to be completely worth bringing in now, the week before the buy period? How much cash is he going to make if he gets another 50, which will be a lot? You know, be up over 50, 60K. As he's already 470, it's like, well, can you cop that extra 50, 60K? This is my thoughts right now as I'm, I'm looking to bring him in. Um, is it worth copying that at this stage? Or is it worth waiting until round 14? That's going to be the question. And we'll work it out. We'll see how the suspensions and things roll over. But if you're needing a good scorer, if, you think, if you're in head-to-head -head terms, you've definitely got to get him in, I think. Um, but if not, I think you can almost wait. Or you could pick him up this week. Either way, is completely fine, based on the makeup of your squad. Rogers in there at number five still. So hopefully he can keep getting into the middle of the field and play a little bit more of a roving role. Hopefully from earlier in the game. I don't know why he has to wait until the second half to start roaming a little bit. Um, or at best, if they can... Uh, yeah, if Walsh can keep getting it out to him or Nick Arima, whoever's out there, and, and some free space, then he's going to run rampant like he did on the weekend. Obviously against a better team at the moment in the uh, in the Cowboys, so we'll see how that goes. God, it's good to say that they're, they're a slightly better team at the moment than they have been. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Toe Harris in there in the 13, same thing. You could almost wait till 14 if you don't have him now. He's not someone that's going to gain too much in price for you and, and stuff you around, so that's that. Uh, the rest of the guys, not too much to talk about there. Yeah, uh, moving along to the next one, and, and Tigers and the and the Dragons there. This makes my blood boil. <laughs> I don't know when I read this scene list, I was like, Madge, you bastard. Um, what's he doing? Why is why is Mbai still at six, and why is Dewey at three getting 50 metres gained? I don't understand. I still don't understand. Anyway, Laurie, Laurie's in there. Keep keep holding him till 14. Dewey, let's hope he scores better against the Dragons. They're still a little bit undermanned, but they've got a few guys back. Um, Roberts moves back in on the five jersey, which I don't know if that helps anyone. Um, Twile's in there at 10. Lucy's still going. So I don't think Offhand Gow is an option. A few people were talking about him. He's scoring better, but he's too expensive now. Uh, Sean Bloor's still in the 15 role. There's no Simkin in there this time. He's on the in the reserves jersey. So is Stefano. So yeah, not too, not too many changes on the Tiger side. Maybe they do it you know, an hour before kickoff, and that would be ideal. I would appreciate that if you move Dewey back to six. But Anyway, moving on to, to the Dragons, and Jack Bird's still an amazing option if you if you need a centre, but I know a few people probably aren't in that, you know, aren't looking for one now after, you know, last week they would have been looking for one. Gerard Beal comes back into the centres as well, so he's an interesting one uh, as, a, as a player that's been in and out over the last little bit, but not fantasy relevant. Uh, AMAC, I think you just keep keep holding him. I don't know if he's a pick-up yet, maybe in 13. I think he's, what, yeah, so you, like I said last week, just use the relevant information you've got. Wait till uh, he gets a chance to actually you know, play another game of 80 minutes and see if that continues on from here. Obviously, with a bunch of players out, that's, that's part, probably part of the reason why he's playing 80. You know, when you've got Jackson Ford playing a 13, Billy Birds in the 11, it's not really you know that helpful for your squad. Amone, Farmacilli, Alvaro, and Hunt is not you know not the best interchange going around. Hopefully, Alvaro can get some bigger minutes this week. You know, Clunes in there on the emergencies again. So is Ellis. So these guys kind of guys played a couple of the. Uh, you know, both played last week, so keep that in mind. Uh, but moving to Panthers and the Dogs, and Edwards is out again this week, and you'd expect that, which is really annoying if you picked him up because you know, hamstring things, hamstring injuries with him especially. There's no point of them trying to rush him back. He's he's had a few of them. Make sure he's completely fit and he'll be ready to go for round 13, you'd imagine. So the team doesn't change. Momorowski's still in there. Leota comes back, but we lose Capewell to a suspension for one week. Therefore, Martin comes into the 12, Loder comes back, Spencer stays on the bench. So, uh, yeah, if that means anything to you. On the dog side, Wakeham's still in in number six. There was talks about Flanagan coming back. He is not, not yet anyway. Um, their back line's the same. So Lesniak's been scoring pretty well, but again, they've they got a buy coming up. Jackson Torpenny moves back to the nine jersey. If anyone's uh, still holding on to him, you've, you're going to get a good benefit there and a, and, a, and a good score. I think he definitely will score well in a big minute role there with Dietz in the 14 role, but again, not someone we want to be picking up this week. If he continues to get the nine role long term, 
then I think it could be a really cool option in round 14. So keep that in mind, guys, as someone to possibly pick up in that period as a, as a nice cash cow. Lukey Thompson keeps his 10 roll. Josh Jackson moves back to the 13. So yeah, that's kind of the thing with uh, Renew for Tony. Uh, Chris missed out this week with suspension. So yeah, the, the, the team can change around very, very easy. And you see a Tony in the 22 roll. So if you picked him up a couple of weeks ago, you've really, really missed out, unfortunately. All right, moving along. Bunch more games to go. We got the Rabbitohs and the Eels, and you know Rabbitohs team very very similar to last week. Murray comes back as as the big one, so I don't think there's many opportunities for them to you know, to cry this week or to to struggle. Uh, it's going to be a really tough game again against the Eels. So it'll be interesting to see where they're at as a squad and as a as a club right now. If they can bounce back and, and do a lot better on the on the Eels side. Yeah, what's it in there? Sorry, on the on the bunnies, really no no one really to talk about. I think you got to hold Gags, you hold Mitchell. I wouldn't be bringing him in this week. Walker's probably a hold. Reynolds is you know, not scoring that great. He could probably go. Cook, similar thing. Just got to hold, and yeah, maybe you can get him out in round thirteen if he's in like twenty two trades. But I wouldn't be thinking that with with him on the yield side. Object doing well. Question will be: Does he, is there any chance of playing Origin? Depends how many good centers the the. Uh, so the Broncos, the, uh, <laughs> it used to be the Broncos team, basically, uh, Broncos and Storm, but uh, the Queensland team we're talking about. Let's wait with Gutho. Moses will be good, I think, to bring in next week after he had a, a low score and he should lose a, a little bit of money for you. Reed Marnay will be waiting off on uh, to see if he makes the Origin team. Similar with Madison, you can probably just wait now after a low score. Papa Lee, I think, is a really, really strong option this week. Murata Niokore. In, in the 14 jersey, there's a good chance him and Wanga, uh, Wanga, Wanga, Wanga Blake will um will switch, you know, an hour before kickoff there. Uh, not too much to talk about other than that with those guys. Regan Campbell-Gillard is out for the week, so is Josh Mansell, so keep that in mind. Only short-term ones for that. Uh, Roosters Raiders, so on the Roosters side of things, Walker's still named. Don't have to worry about him getting named. It's just going to be if, he's, uh, if you're looking to trade him out this week. Crichton is... Uh, facing his two-week charge, he is going to the judiciary tonight to talk it through and see how that goes there. You know, is he someone that you should be trading out? I don't think so. I think you just hold him through the whole way. Uh, Radley is definitely out for a week this week, but he's, charged, he's, he's trying to downgrade his four weeks to, to a couple less. So we'll see how that goes. On the uh, on the Raiders side, and Rapana comes back, which is great for anyone who owns him. George. Uh, Georgie Williams has been granted leave to go back home on compassionate terms. So, yeah, thanks, thanks to George for, for coming over and having a, a couple of good seasons. But unfortunately, he's yeah, a bit too homesick and wanted to go home, which means Sam Williams stays in the squad. Jack Whiten continues playing or returns back into the sixth jersey. Good good news for, for my side and anyone who picked up Starling is that he, uh, it looks like he's okay. He's been named in the nine jersey and Hodgson on the bench. So hopefully a very similar role to what happened the week before when Starling scored well and Hodgson came on and played through the middle. So that's that. Harry Naira has been a great option for anyone who brought him in. He had that one lower round in the 30s, but then great since then. Uh, so, you know, well done to those who, who have picked him up. I would be holding off this week as they don't, you know, they, they don't play in 13. Similar with Sutton, I'd be waiting until round 14 for him if you're, if you're thinking about picking him up. Um, that's about all, guys, other than that, with that game. And then we'll go to the Sharks and the Titans. Ronaldo comes back into the five jersey. Ramian also comes back, so a pretty quick turnaround for him. He'll be someone someone interesting to think about in a round 14, 15 scenario after they have their bye. Uh, in terms of the rest of the team, there's not really much to talk about. Not really many fantasy relevant players. Uh, actually, I should say Chad Townsend's been moved to 18 with uh, with Moylan coming back. Uh, yeah, Moylan and Johnson as the half partners, I should say. Sorry. Uh, yeah, interesting. Fourth from Grace from, from Townsend, that's for sure. And how good when Cowboys have Sign him on a big deal next year. <laughs> uh, Brimo, Brimo in the one jersey. Ben's going pretty well. Fox has been great. So if you want to, if you need a half, I'd be picking him up this week before Moses, just because I think Moses had a little bit of cash to lose, and you can pick him up in thirteen if you if you're looking for a couple of halves. For feeder returns in number twelve jersey, which is great. If you hold him, you're going to get a really good score this week, and then he should be out next week. Mo Fodder Waker also really really strong last week, and the question will be, does he get a chance in the Origin jersey? So. Good chance he does, so keep keep that in mind. Same with Tino, he'll be in Origin. Uh, but yeah, that's about all with the Titans. Not too much to talk about. Taylor's gonna, you know, should be a decent chance of coming back and playing, but that doesn't really affect anyone. And our last game there, Knights and Eagles. Ponga comes back, which is great. Bradman Best will be back as well. Kurt Mann moves to six, so should be a much better 
outlook for the Knights plays this week, although they come up against the Eagles, who are absolutely dominating at the moment. Uh, on the Eagles side of things, we get... Who do we get back? There's one, uh, Curtis Sirenen comes back into the 14 jersey, which is really cool for them. He, you know, There's a chance he comes on and plays 11 or 12, or he just comes back for, through a 40 to 50 minute roll. Uh, Ola Koatu uh, is dropped out of the 17 now. So yeah, uh, a small cash cow, but wasn't a, wasn't to be, unfortunately. Uh, Trebojevic times two, both doing well. You should see Jake bounce back. Obviously, if he's not getting Sinbin, he should do well. And Schuster stays in a six jersey while Kieran Foran is out, and he's not on the uh, reserves yet at all. So yeah, you should see a, a decent score again from Schuster. I'd be continuing to hold him going forward. If you're looking at your Barnett and Fitzgibbon situation, again, you just keep holding on to to Barnett. I suppose just do you, do you try and hold him as long as you can until 13 and then move him on. Frizzell also a hold over the buy period for sure as he's been scoring really well. So yeah, that's that's probably all I got to talk about, guys, with the, the team list. I hope that that way of doing it was really informative, really helped you out. If it did, please hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. We're going to do some buy and hold sell. We're going to talk about some of the guys in certain price brackets, in certain positions that you might want to target coming into round 13. But it's all going to be a little bit up in the air was, you know, the, the origin teams aren't really set yet. So it might be a better opportunity to try and, you know, hev heavily trade in round 13, but try and hold off this week if you've got a decent 17 together. So unless you're looking at big upgrades or there's a cash cow, you know, like a Walsh or someone you really miss and you're like, I need to get them now then I'd be trying to hold off with limited trade. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Catch you in the next one, team.